More and more, there is a growing awareness around the ways in which media messages negatively impact the body image and self-esteem of women, but what about men? Though the dialogue around it may not be as robust, the way that men see themselves is most certainly shaped by the media. As is the case with girls, boys are taught from a young age to bind to certain cultural ideals about what it means to be a man. Cartoons and action figures marketed to boys often depict superheroes, soldiers and sports stars. Clearly, the primary message delivered by much of the merchandise is that to be masculine, men must have a toned, muscular physique. Children's television and movies reinforce the same idea. The male heroes are usually very action-oriented, frequently taking charge in order to save the day. The result is that many boys begin to internalise a caricature of masculinity, and the act of showing emotion and being introspective is seen as feminine. Yeah, I do, because you're always probably looking to compare yourself with people that you idolise. So you're forever wanting to you know, keep better in yourself, and perhaps that means that you're not actually happy with your own image. Yeah, especially now there's a lot of social media on things like Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and you get these celebrity icons or celebrity personal trainers posting these images of themselves and videos training. And I know from clients that I train myself, they do compare themselves and sometimes actually you just need to focus on yourself. Yeah, a few years ago I did want to be a bit bigger and I started getting on the weights, but do you know what, it was actually like a lot of effort trying to keep eating lots and training lots and I think like, I'm quite happy how I am now, I like my cycling, I like my running and triathlon and things like that and I just train in the gym to, to be sort of fit and strong. Yeah, so as I was saying before, I think uh, now social media is absolutely massive. Like Most people are on Instagram, most people are on Facebook. They'll either be following their friends or celebrities and they see them post something about fitness or food and they're comparing themselves with that person naturally and then, you know, looking to improve themselves when they, they should probably be just be happy with the way they are. Just as women are told they need to be beautiful to be considered valuable, men are told they must be physically appealing as well. And a large part of that is having an unrealistically toned physique and the mentality that goes along with it. The negative impacts of this are twofold. First, men are taught to ignore any impulse that may not be seen as traditionally masculine. This can make it difficult for them to learn to open up emotionally. Secondly, this compounds the issue of body image for men. It is understandable how men can develop insecurities around their physical appearance, and by extension, their masculinity, when they're constantly being fed messages that tell them they must meet an unrealistic standard. Today's media has seemingly formulated the idea that if you want to be successful, you must be physically attractive. On the opposite end of that spectrum, if you are deemed to be overweight, you are then suddenly considered to be weak and insignificant. This trend of stereotypes has been going on for decades and continues to be present in today's society more than ever. Yeah, definitely. So, being in the fitness industry, I know that people are always looking at me, looking at what I eat, looking at what I drink and going, oh, you can't have that. And actually, do you know what, I'm just a normal person. I should be entitled to eat just the same as anyone else. Being in this sort of industry, people do expect a lot of you, so you have to be very careful what you put on social media. Yeah, I do have some that constantly want to know what their weight is and how they're doing, which is fine, but I always say to them, especially weight loss or weight gain, whatever it is, it doesn't happen overnight, and some people think it's gonna happen after a week, so I keep obsessing over it. focus on themselves initially and basically set themselves a long-term goal and then break that long-term goal into short steps because if you're just focusing on the long goal all the time and it's not happening immediately 
then it can be easy to become discouraged. This male obsession with body image was first explored in a book written by Harrison Pope in the year 2000 called The Adonis Complex, which explains how men are feeling a growing suicidal pressure to have a muscular physique. This obsession with body image can affect anyone within society, ranging from everyday individuals like you and I to the ultra-muscular bodybuilders you see in magazines. This obsession can sometimes lead to implications such as the development of muscle dysmorphia and or various eating disorders. Muscle dysmorphia is a predominantly male condition that developed due to the societal pressures regarding body image. Muscle dysmorphia is essentially reverse anorexia. Instead of predominantly young girls who want to appear thinner and who diet and exercise to achieve this, you've got predominantly young men who want to look more muscular and they're dieting and exercising to get bigger. This means that they'll be in the gyms for excessive periods of time, hitting the weights and taking supplements. Unfortunately, in order to get bigger, some individuals may turn to anabolic steroids in an attempt to achieve their goals quicker. But this unfortunately can lead to addiction and also very severe health implications. As a male, especially in the gym, everyone's comparing themselves with each other, like how they look in the mirror. Can they do this weight? Can they do that way? At the end of the day, it doesn't matter what weight you can do, as long as it's good for you individually and it's helping you uh, achieve the level of fitness you want to achieve. But there is a stereotype in the gym, and it's like a, I guess you call it an ego. You get people in the weights room that will just lift a heavy weight for the sake of lifting it and actually probably do it wrong. No, I don't believe men should have to be, you know, listed as strong and alpha male. Because like myself, I'm not one of the big strong people, but I'd class myself as pretty fit and good at the sport that I can do. And I still get a lot of respect. People that lift heavier than me will still ask me for, you know, technique advice. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's one of the biggest things in today's society. And mental health is actually, I think, impacted a lot by social media because people will see something or they'll see a post on Facebook or Instagram and it will, might, might make them feel a little bit bad about themselves. And that's where the whole process starts. And negative thoughts can lead to negative feelings and can, can lead to negative actions. So if they're actually able to talk about it, uh, before it gets to that stage of where it can become anxiety and depression, then it's going to be a much better place for everyone. Results show that more and more individuals in the UK are turning to anabolic steroids, with a significant increase of 19,000 users reported by the Home Office in 2017. With over a million active steroid users, that means that on average, 3% of the male population is using these substances. That's one in every 31 men. No, I would never consider using steroids. If I felt that I was too overweight, I probably would. No, I don't think so, unless I was aiming to get really big really quickly. But at the moment, I just try to enjoy working out and getting the results without using any steroids or anything like that, just legal supplements. Uh, no, definitely not, because like, if I was going to gym, I'd rather have it properly instead of all the health risks with steroids. I mean, if they want to, that's their business. It's not my place to say what they can and can't do. No, I don't, because it gives them a unfair advantage. Definitely no, because I think that's uh, cheating, and some people that don't use it might feel like it's uh, all very unfair. No, because I feel like it's not it's not legit. No, but pretty much everything has health risks. Don't really know, to be honest. I know you can get skin problems and maybe like liver problems and stuff like that. Apart from that, I'm not really sure. I've never really looked into it. Not really. I know you can have like heart problems and all that, but no, not, not fully. Don't think so. I mean, it's more just 
human choice. If they want to use it, they can use it. That's not my business. No, because you're choosing to use them. And if it helps you, then it's doing a good thing and not a bad thing. I think they should be legal. People that want to use them can use them, but I think they should definitely be illegal and banned in sports competitions because that's just really unfair in my opinion. With all the health issues and all that, I think they should, 100%. It's clear steroid use is not just a trend, but a cultural preoccupation that on statistics alone should change the way we perceive modern day Britain. Needle exchanges have also seen a 600% rise in steroid users in the past decade. In some parts of the UK, you are now as likely to contract HIV taking steroids as you are injecting heroin. We only need to look at the recent Hollywood blockbusters to see how muscular men are dominating the media. Although, it's not just on the cinema screen that we see muscular men as the ideal. Brands such as Calvin Klein and Ralph Lauren use advertisements depicting young, slender, muscular men to sell their products. Research has shown that the male models in fitness magazines, video games, and on TV have become more muscular with a dramatic decrease in body fat. Young men and often young teenagers will look to these characters in the media as role models and they'll aspire to embody these individuals in real life. These characters in the media often have unobtainable physiques because frankly they're just not real. This can lead to younger men growing up with poorer body esteem which leads to a more fertile breeding ground for both muscle dysmorphia and eating disorders to develop. Yeah. <laughs>